Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we will be talking about threads. Now this tutorial might sound a bit complex and that is because it is uh, but it is extremely crucial for us to learn threads while developing an android application and we especially use threads while creating android games or any other complex ac application which requires a lot of processes running in the background. So basically in order to understand threads you need to pay close attention to what I am saying. So a simple definition of thread would be that a thread is a simple path of execution. So for example if you go to this main activity.java file right over here. Uh, but before that I need to mention that I have created a new project and I have selected the API level 15 and I have named my application as my thread app and if you switch on to the java class of this main activity as you could see that there are multiple lines of code written over here so basically we have our imports here and then we have our main activity which extends the app compat activity and a thread is basically a path of execution so whenever your program executes what happens is that so whenever your application executes what happens is that the computer is going to create a thread for your application or the thread for your code and that thread is called as the main thread and it is going to execute your code in the top down fashion so your code is going to start executing from here it is going to go down line by line it is going to compile the code and then it is going to execute the code depending upon the instructions which you have specified inside the code so the basic flow of execution is from top to bottom so your code starts from here, executes each line one by one and then finally ends over here. So what happens is that whenever your application is running, it is going to create a main thread and the main thread is going to execute. Now in order to get a better understanding of threads, let's assume that you have a line of code or a block of code right over here, which is taking a lot of time for execution. So what happens is that unless and until this block right here is not going to get executed the code which is written in front of us or the code which is written after it is not going to execute at all. This piece of code is going to wait forever for this piece of code to end. So in order to avoid that situation what we do is that we make the use of threads. So basically what happens is that apart from this main thread we have one more thread which is running in parallel to it so we put some piece of code on the second thread which we have created so now we have two threads the first thread is going to execute the main part and the second thread which is going in parallel is going to execute the second part so in that way we could ensure a proper execution of our application so in this tutorial what we are trying to do is that we will try and make an application and we'll make it crash on purpose and when it crashes what we are going to do is that we are going to create a thread and we are going to learn and we are going to learn how threads could be used in order to avoid the crashing of the application so the first thing which we do is that we go into our content mail.xml then we delete this text view right here and that is because we won't be needing it and then basically what we'll do is that we'll have uh, some text over here and we'll have a button and whenever we click a button uh, this text is going to change and this is the basic process we are trying to attempt and of course it will execute and that is because it is a simple process uh, but in order to uh, make the application crash what we are going to do is that we are going to write in some code which is going to delay the execution of this method right here in order to do that we are going to make use of the function which is called as the current time so let's get started with the tutorial so the first thing which we'll need to do is that we'll need a large text onto our screen so we drag it and drop it here and then we'll need a button so we also drag and drop it here and now the next thing which we'll need to do is that we need to change the text so go to here and go to properties and change the text to let's say hello and let's change this text to click me so let this be click me 
all right once we have the text changed the next thing which we will need to do is that we need to set the IDs of these text view and the button and by now you might have understood why we give an ID to the text view as well as the button so the major purpose of giving IDs to these widgets over here is basically in order to get a reference to them whenever we are working with them in the Java code so we select the text view and then we go to ID and let's name this as my text and let's give an ID to the button as well so let's say the ID of the button is my button okay once we have this setup the next thing which we do is that we add an on click to this button right here so whenever a button is clicked we need to add a method which is going to execute so we select it go to properties and scroll down here and as you could see this is the on click so let's specify some method into it so let's type in click my button so let's say we name the method as click my button which we are going to write soon so once everything is set up the next thing which we do is that we go to the main activity dot java which is our java class and we delete the code which we won't be needing so delete this all right now the next thing which we do is that we need to create the function which we have def which we have defined in the on click of this button so we go right here and we go outside this on create and we are going to create our function here so we type public void and the name of our function was click my button and if you are not sure what the name of your function was so you simply go to this content mail.xml switch to the text view and as you could see android on click equals this is our method name so if you have some confusion you simply copy this name written here and in order to confirm that this is your name just paste it over here okay now once we have the function name the next thing which we do is that we pass on parameters so parameter is going to be view view and then we are going to define this function so the first thing which we will need to do is that uh, let's say we want to introduce a delay inside this function so that whenever the button is clicked an action is going to occur but the action is going to occur after some delay so let's go ahead and create some delay so let's first get the system time and store it in some variable so in order to store the time we use the type long so we type long and let's say future time equals system dot current time and this current time function is basically going to give you the current time in milliseconds so now let's say we have to introduce a delay of 10 seconds so for typing in 10 seconds we have to convert it into milliseconds so 10 seconds is basically 10,000 milliseconds so to the future time we add 10,000 milliseconds so we type plus 10,000 and once this is done we execute a for loop like when the system's current time is less than the future time so for this condition we are going to execute some code so we type while system dot current time is less than the future time then we are going to execute some code and inside it we are going to make this thing wait so the first thing which we will need to do is that we will need to use the synchronized keyword so we type synchronized and to this we pass the parameter this and that is because we are going to deal with this object and the synchronized keyword is basically a keyword which is used to prevent multiple threads from crashing into each other so we use it and then finally inside this synchronized function we are going to have a try and catch block so we type try then the, we, then we type in the code for try and we, if we have an exception we need to catch it so we type catch exception let's name it as e and we catch the exception all right then the next thing which we do is that we need to make the system wait inside the try block so we type the wait function 
and it is going to take in the parameters so we want to make it wait for the difference between the future time and the system's current time so we type future time minus and I think I have misspelled future time here if you D U this should be T and this also should be T once this is corrected we switch on to this wait method and inside it we type future time minus system dot current time now even if you don't understand what we have done here in this code is that basically we want to make the application crash so in order to make it crash we have written some function which is going to cause a delay and that delay is eventually going to crash our application and also there are multiple methods by which you could introduce a delay but i found this method to be useful in order to crash the application so i have used it and the next thing which we will need to do is that we also need to introduce some other code which is going to execute so let's say we want to change the text of this when we click this button right here so we switch to the java code and this is our catch block and after the catch block we go to brackets down here and here we type in the code which we need for the application to change the text so we type text view to get a reference and let's name it as my text equals text view then we type find view by id r dot id dot and the name of our text view is my text so we get a reference to it now the next thing which we do is that we set the text to something else so we type my text dot set text and set text is basically a method which is used to change text and let's say we type in button clicked okay now once we have this code we are done with the application now let's go ahead and save the code and let's execute this application onto our emulator so as you could see our application is up and running on the emulator and we have our text field right here or the text view right here and we have the button right here so whenever we click this button click me over here it is going to cause a delay and the text is going to take a while to change and after 10 seconds the text is going to change to button clicked and eventually if you keep on clicking this button right here your application is eventually going to crash so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you